Carlo Burga and I'm the uh, chair of the Peruvian Business Council. Uh, it is a great honor for me to have uh, Mr. Julio Velarde. Señor Velarde, thank you for being here with us. Uh, I want to uh, uh, thank uh, every one of the participants. We have participants uh, joining through LinkedIn uh, in a direct, in a direct uh, 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 streaming, uh, participants here in Zoom, um, participants uh, in YouTube. So uh, thank you every single one of, us, of you for, for uh, registering and participating in this, uh, in this important event. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, introduce the members of uh, the Board of Directors of the Peruvian Business Council. We have Augusto uh, Thornberry. Uh, thank you, Augusto. Uh, Ray Meloni. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, uh, Lucia Ruiz Stoic. Uh, we have Ruben uh, Bonilla and Ami. We are five members of the board, and we have a special advisor, Mr. Jorge uh, Luis Ramos Feliz. Uh, I'm going to make an introduction of, uh, I'm going to make now of Mr. Velarde. Uh, Mr. Velarde, uh, first, uh, thank you very much for the time uh, you're dedicating for this uh, uh, event. Thank you for the support of the Central Bank uh, in the preparation of this event, uh, Mr. Loyola. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, what can I say about Julio Velarde that you don't know already? Julio Velarde is uh, the, the, the governor of the Central Bank of Peru. Uh, he has been recognized so many times as uh, uh, the Central Banker of the Year and uh, Mr. the opinion of Mr. Velarde is very well respected in the, in the, in the industry, in the finance industry. And today I believe the central bank and the institutional position of, of, of Julio Velarde are uh, a reference for Peru. And uh, we are uh, honored to have him. And Mr. Velarde, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you again after some years. <laughs> uh, I am going to be, uh, I'm more interested in your question than actually my presentation. So I will try to go through, through the, my presentation very, very quickly. Let okay. me start with uh, Our first part will be uh, how we see a world affecting. Of course, we are seeing a slowdown of the world economy. Some areas are more affected. Uh, here I have China growing 3.3 is the consensus, but the World Bank, yes, at the start of this, this week, I believe, lower it to 2.8 this year. Next year, probably we will see some recovery, mainly because of the effect of not having these lockdowns that were pretty important this year. But China has a structural problem. So, in spite of people criticizing when one says that they are going to face problem or import slowdown in the next years, because they say we have been saying that for many years, uh, using yes, a infrastructure investment, residential housing investment, as the way of promoting growth has probably reached almost its limits. Um, but well, uh, the euro area is going to experience, if not a recession, probably no growth at all. The approach of the ECB was a zero growth for the next quarters. And that is considering that there is not going to be any, a, no energy, energy rationing at all. We have seen the inflation of Germany now reaching to the, the highest in 70 years. And Germany is probably to the, the projections of the investment banks in this case are of negative growth for Germany in the next quarters. The United States is going to face an open, but the American economy is so strong that the probabilities of uh, soft landing or even a soft recession are pretty high. And with that level of activity, probably will continue supporting in a good part of the world economy. 
Latin America, as usual, has rather poor growth prospects for this year and next year. For this year, uh, we are expecting a 2.3%, probably closer to two even, and next year, slightly below 2%, 1.8. Uh, let's continue, please. The, the, the big problem has been inflation, uh, which has exceeded the levels of 20, 25, as in Germany, even 70 years, around the world, or most of the countries in any case. Uh, the countries in Latin America, the inflation targeters, and also Eastern Europe, had been uh, earlier in their increase in, in the hiking of rates. You can see there that uh, most of the countries in Latin America has, have increased a lot from the low levels they had during the pandemic. The highest case, uh, the higher risk of regulation, the lower within the emerging markets, the, uh, the inflation target of the big economies is probably 6.75. Let us continue, please. I am going to go a little bit fast in this. The copper price has descended, but this is still above the average. The average for the year 2008, 2020 was $3. Now it's uh, almost 20% above that. Let us continue, please. Um, in our case, in spite of these falling prices, and in our official report, we have lowered the amount of ex uh, trade balance that we're going to have this year and next year. Still, they are pretty healthy. This year, we expect a trade surplus of around 12.4 million, billion, excuse me, and for ne next year, also around that amount. Let us continue, please. Uh, economy activity, we have a quick recovery from the fall during the pandemic. In the fourth quarter of 2020, we were very close to the levels before pre-pandemia, and much cl closer to those levels before pre-pandemia in most European countries, for example or most of the countries even in Latin America. Then in part because of the political situation, elections in 2021, a lot of uncertainty, the growth has been somewhat smaller. But in spite of that, we can see that manufacturing, for example, is, uh, was in December, 2008% above the level of pre-pandemia, you had to, in 2022 around 6%. The recovery has been faster in sectors not linked to primary sectors, to mining or agriculture. We can see that we continue growing, let us continue. Uh, and it has been supported, uh, even, even the, the most indicators are pretty favorable. Volume of imports of financial inputs, for example, from manufacturing has increased uh, almost 15% the last month where we got data, which is July. Uh, consumer loans continue increasing at a very quick pace. And then uh, mortgages continue increasing at a faster pace than before. Of course, that reflects in part the, the increase in prices. But even so, we have not seen a, such a dramatic adjustment in credit to families, to households. And the volume of non commodity exports also continue increasing. Please can continue. A formal employment, a, every firm with more than 10 workers has to report the number of workers they have a, every month. We have seen a, already for 12 months. Uh, formal employment has been higher than before the pandemic. Um, and in the private sector, for example, the, the growth has been, in the last month, July, more than 7% compared to the previous year. In Lima, which was somewhat uh, behind the national average, has formal employment above 2019 already for five months or almost. Uh, as has happened in many cities uh, around the world, the recovery of employment in these big cities has been slower than the national, in part because they concentrated this activity have more intensive human contact. The case of New York was very visible compared to the average, for example, before. No? Uh, continue, please. Expectations continue not being so positive. Uh, there is still a uh, not confidence in the quality, I would say, of the government. They are in a negative territory. They have improved slightly. They are less negative, but they're still pretty low. For the national economy, the expectations are three and 12 months. But for the sectors, they have improved. And, and they are almost neutral 
in, in the case of the 12 months expectations. And I had not put there for the first, when we ask how is your firm expected to be doing three and 12 months ahead, they tend to be above 50 percent, about 50 now. Let us continue, please. Uh, yeah, going to slowly, I believe. Um, as we can see in the first half of the year, the negative growth was in the primary sector, mining particularly. And it had to do with demonstration that affected the production in some of the most important copper mines. Um, we expect this, not only uh, these demonstrations and social conflicts to diminish their effect a little bit in the second half, but also we are we have started a new copper project that will lead to the production of copper around 8%. Uh, as you can see, the, the surprise has been the sector link to demand or, or manufacturing exports that are manufactured grew 6.5% the first half of the year. We expect it to grow less in the second half, but it still is a pretty healthy growth. And the same with our sectors linked to domestic demand. Let us continue, please. And that has to do because private consumption, uh, we have seen the first half of the year going 5.8%. We expect that to moderate in the, in the second half and also next year. But it has been mainly pulled by, by private consumption. Let us continue, please. A private investment is growing, a growing 0%, but it's, it's zero compared to the exceptional level we have in 2021. We see the levels that we're expecting for private investment this year, they are 15% above the levels of, two, of 2019. That is, as they have been growing almost 5% per year since then. Um, we expect mining investment to fall this year a little less than 4% and to fall around 16% next year. That is because uh, I, I commented that a new mine has extended production. The investment of that mine in, is that now in the numbers for the rest of the year or for next year. And there are no new big investment projects coming forward. Um, but let us continue, please. Private investment that grew, had the recovery last year, is expected to grow 2.1% this year. If we can go back, it was negative the first, first half of the year. But now a local authority you know, are finishing their period and they are trying to cover the what they have not spent during the rest of the year, and you see uh, a big push uh, in investment at the local level. Next year, we expect 0% of growth, in part because new authorities are starting the 1st of January, and probably they will take some time for the new investment to continue. They revise their plans, they have new people, et cetera, et cetera. And let us continue, please. Continue. Um, what, what we have seen is a, a spectacular recovery in, in the health of the, of, the, of the public sector accounts. And the fiscal deficit that was 8.9% in the year 2020 was a, only 2.5 last year. I would expect it to be 1.9% this year. It, it has not been because of a element of, of expenditure. It has been basically because of a big increase in revenues. Uh, let us continue, please. The domestic, the public debt over GDP is expected to fall a percent of GDP this year and also next year. Uh, until two years ago, Paraguay and Chile in the region had lower levels of public debt over GDP. Now, a poor stance the country with the lowest level of the 10 countries in, in South America and Mexico. Let us continue, please. Inflation as well, uh, is pretty high around the region. We're slightly below, be, below the, the level of the seven bigger economies, but even so, it's highly worrisome for us. It's the highest inflation since we have inflation targeted, actually the highest inflation since 1997, 25 years. The increase in food and energy has been much higher than 
the, the global inflation, the land inflation. And, and we are very concerned about that. Um, but it, it, it's, a, it's a problem we can see at first. We believe in our case has been mainly supply factors of these countries produce where the weight of food is higher in the CPA, CPI basket. But even so, of course, we're also trying to control what, what, what we try with the risk, not only the part of demand that were there with very low risk, but also that, uh, that the contagion of this inflation of these sectors that go into other factors, try to maintain the expectations anchored at a lower level. What we are concerned, everybody's concerned around the world actually, is that we go from an inflation of an equilibrium around 2.4, 2.5% to an equilibrium around 4%. Uh, and that will be terrible. Let us continue, please. Uh, as in the rest of the country, we have an increase in the rate. If we have started on August with an increase in 25 basis points. Then we increase for 12 consecutive months. Our meetings are every month different from Colombia or the state or the Fed. Uh, we increase 50 basis points every man. That will be 75 basis points in the case of those countries that meet every 45 days. No? And that has increased 25 basis points. We're still uh, we're below the, the level of other countries. In many of the countries, that, that really, they don't have only the supply shock. They have a product of demand. The case of Chile was very so Colombia, even now. Let us continue, please, in the next one. The neutral rate we have with expectations 12 months ahead is 1.65. We estimate our neutral rate is 1.5. So we are now above the neutral rate. Before we were very close, but as we increase uh, interest rates also, the expectations were increasing. Uh, no, no, well, well now, now we can take the test, uh, analyze it more closely because we're a little above what you estimate even a little rate. Let us continue this. A credit, a continuous credit. So this is credit to the private sector, including not only customers, but, but firms. In, in part, it's because um, there was a big support program uh, where the central bank finance a made repos against a loan portfolio guaranteed by the government. That is being paid at the end of 2021. This amounted to almost 9% of GDP. Now it's around 5% of GDP and continues decreasing. Let us continue, please. Um, we intervened this year a lot because we had the biggest outflow of money from Peruvian residents, it amounted to almost 8% of GDP. And that has come now. Uh, the ratio has been marginal this year. It has been mostly renewals and swaps that we had. Uh, and even that amount has been reduced a little bit for those swaps. Let us continue, please. In the changes now we, uh, we are the, we were depreciated at least until one moment ago. We might be now close to no depreciation. But at, until the start of this week, there were only four, four currencies that had appreciated this year, you know, the real, the Mexican peso, the Russian rubble, and the, and the Peruvian so In part because we had also a depreci important depreciation for us in last year. But uh, it has, what, what we have seen is that these outflows that we saw from Peruvians taking their money out of the country has been reduced a lot with this year. The concerns about uh, radical measures that can be taken by the government has almost dissipated. So probably that uh, there are pressure. Uh, of course, the movements in the currency have reported more because of movements in international portfolio, but even so, let us continue, please. We still have a very healthy level of reserves, 30 percent GDP, which is pretty high for actually. It's one of the highest in the world in, as a percent of GDP. Let's continue, please. Uh, in, inflation, we have, it has been declining in three months, the headline inflation. But as has happened in many countries, you see even the United States in September, 
uh, excuse me, in August, uh, the reduction of inflation was slower than what we were expecting. Um, we, we expect, well, we are going to see that. The, the problem is what we were talking, food and energy is increasing 12%. <coughs> Core inflation has, is, has been 5.4. Core inflation has not been, as, as has happened also in many countries, I don't want to say, that's it, they say. A, a core tends to be more resistant, probably because core is still is picking up part of the second round effects of the increasing headline inflation. But we expect them to uh, let, let's, let's, we expect them to, to converge to the target in next year. Next, next, please. Expectation have also corrected itself. They stand at 5.10% uh, and now in the latest survey. Let's continue, please. Uh, and we expect inflation to finish in 7.8%. Uh, in, in the newspapers today, I appear that has said seven or eight. Uh, I, I said in a conference yesterday, I believe seven, seven, eight, forgetting to put the dot and they had said seven, one, whatever. Next year, we expect to, to, to finish in 3%. We expect a, a quick fall in inflation. Uh, starting a month of March, uh, that, that trend will be of continuous declining. Of course, a little bit bumpy. In some month inflation, 12 month inflation might increase a little bit, but that trend will be, will be clear for to finish or the inflation that very close to it in any case at the end of next year. Um, let us continue, please. And, and that's all. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, señor Velarde. Thank you very much, Mr. Velarde. Um, uh, now we're going to open the, the floor for questions. Uh, we have uh, 15, uh, 15 minutes for questions right now. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, the participants to raise the, their hand uh, so, that the, so that we can uh, pick up uh, uh, the uh, the the questions. I gonna okay. I I gonna make one uh, the first question, uh, Mr. Velarde. The the Fed uh, here in the United States has uh, raised uh, the interest uh, rate. Uh, in 75 uh, points, uh, less than one, uh, less than one point uh, percentual point, uh, and the the currency, the dollar, is is, is strengthening uh, uh, versus the solids uh, versus, versus pence. Uh, uh, what is the effect uh, in the long term uh, of these changes? We know that the capital is getting uh, expensive every time. But uh, there is more uh, consequences to this decision in the Peruvian economy. Well, a strong dollar usually means a big car account deficit. So it tends to absorb a lot of exports from other countries. Uh, I don't know how long this will keep itself. It's not only in the rate. It's probably the healthier big economy in the world. It's still, uh, the, uh, projection for growth for the United States are much better than much of the world. So we say they continue attracting capital. Uh, how long this will last is very hard to know. Uh, I might be wrong in the numbers, but remember Reagan. Uh, I am going to go to Deutsche Bank, I don't remember the, the, the number for the year, but it was something similar. Uh, the Deutsche Bank, Against the dollar went to something up to 440 Deutsche Marks per dollar. And then, after the plus accords and the disagreements, it went to 1.4. So, you can have these very big movements. I don't believe there is going to be any sort of the plus accords. Uh, I don't have a coordination of I find it hard to imagine now, in any case. But how long did. Who knows? It, it lasts until it, it lasts. <laughs> I don't know when they will step, no? But it's pretty high. 
But the, the causes are not so bad for the world uh, of this. Uh, well, the price in dollars of some commodities might be affected because other countries are paying their own currency. So the prices in euros, in yens of commodity have increased. So demand tends to be affected. So the price in dollars tend to be quite a, somewhat lower. But in any case, they continue absorbing a good amount of impulse because it precisely the dollar is strong and imports of coming from other countries become more competitive, no? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Velarde. Uh, I, I think uh, we have a question by Ben uh, Hogan. Uh, Hi, Mr. Ben? Velarde. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, so we're seeing in the in the U.S. and then also in Europe there uh, are potential food shortages, um, and and then also with the onset of of winter coming with the the major energy crisis, um, yeah. is there any effect? Uh, is, is there any drought in in Peru? Is there expectation that um, agricultural exports are are going to increase because of those different scenarios, or is it not going to affect the economy very much? No, it is going to be affected, I suppose, uh, the first part of the question. Uh, the, the, as you know, the, the demand for food doesn't change too much every year. The approach we have had since 2021, even before the mission of Ukraine, has been weather related that had affected crops. Uh, until now, the situation is hard to presume. <laughs> But probably you will continue having some weather effects and they will keep prices somewhat high. And also you have the added price that has been a, partly your question of fertilizers. The increase in the price of fertilizer will be making food somewhat more expensive. And so we have had a good weather that in part has, is compensating the least application of fertilizers in the land. We expect the in the main crops for the production to be affected very little. It will be affected negatively. And the effect will be mostly felt this quarter, the fourth quarter of this year. But not something so dramatic, let us say, you know? That the problem is world production because of these weather-related factors that became more and more common. No? Uh, but that, that's, uh, that's a concern around the world. No? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sure. Ben. Uh, we have. Thank you, Mr. Velarde. We have another question by Murilo uh, Riccini from Chile. Hello, guys. Um, thanks for organizing business calls for, for this call. I wanted to, to take advantage of your regional conference, of Mr. Velarde, and, and ask you uh, your impressions about the, the expectations of Peruvians about uh, new aids from the from the government. So we, we, we see that this type of uh, expectation seems quite low compared to Chile, Colombia, and even Brazil. So could this uh, lead to a surprise in, in, in GDP growth in 2023? So uh, a different scenario to what seems to be consolidated in the region. So what is your opinion uh, about these uh, kind of expectations uh, on new, new, new aids from, from governments? Is it the social programs you are saying of the government? Or? Yeah. yeah. First, surprise, you know, what I have seen is surprising surprise good, even in Brazil, the last time in Uruguay recently, in the Netherlands, you can mention a lot of countries. Um, uh, just to. I will mean is. Uh, uh, Probably the social programs, they are in the proposal by the Ministry of Finance, but they are not so important within the GDP. And I believe they try to be well focused, that in the application is not so important when they try to execute the program, 
because there are problems identifying those people that are more affected, etc. But, but the idea is instead of subsidizing the energy or subsidizing food, try to direct subsidies or transfers to these poor people, no? which I believe is less costly and also more efficient. Uh, but, but still, we, we keep our projection of growth of 3% no? for next year, similar to this year. Um, but actually, of course, you, you know it's pretty high around the world. No? Yeah, yeah. No, just to flag my impression here, because there is like a, a clear difference in expectations uh, between the, the population. So I, I, I see that Peruvians are not expecting like new uh, social programs from, from, from the government as people are expecting in Chile and, and Colombia and, and in Brazil. So maybe this could lead the uh, 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 GDP growth uh, surprise in the, in the, in the the next year. That, that was my impression. I don't see a negative surprise. Uh, I, I oh, yeah, a, a positive surprise in Peru. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what we have seen is not, not, not only we have, as in, in, in countries around the world, not only Latin America, but we have private savings in 2020. Because of the lockdown, the lower demand for services at that time, et cetera, et cetera. We saw that a good part of withdrawal from pension funds and compensation of employment that was authorized even after the pandemic, they had not been completely spent. They have gone into savings. So probably that greater accumulated savings that some households have might impact consumption. That is why we even for, for some decades we believe that consumption that officially is in 5.8% might have been higher. We see the value attack for sectors, the, the receipts from the sales, they seem to be even higher than 5.8. So the consumption, the surprise I believe might come from, from consumption. Uh, when we saw manufacturing growing 5.6, or six a year or a growing so so well the first half of the year is in part because of this no so it, it can be a positive surprise of course yes I, I couldn't hear you very well sorry uh, I, I understand you but... thank you thank you Murillo uh, thank you, Murillo, thank you. we have okay. now a question but um I'm gonna ask you to to please uh, mute your um uh, 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 fonts so that we can uh have a, a continue with the with the, with the session. With the session. Uh, we have Karsten Cork uh, with a question now. Thank you very much for the presentation, Mr. Velarde. It's always interesting to listen to you. You are a very wise man, and uh, I'm thank you for sharing your knowledge. I wasn't able to be from the beginning, but. Um, uh, I have a question in regards to export and in particular from agriculture. Um, a friend of mine told me that there was a new law that uh, was um, was put on the producers to pay that they have to pay more taxes or social contributions, which has led to uh, some go bankruptcy um, and others to they have to simply stop producing as much as they used to do because the uh, the manpower is is very heavy on on these kind of crops, like, for example, uh, asparagus. And uh, and now uh, in Ica, where there normally was never uh, people to find to help, there is a, a rising unemployment. Yeah. How do you see the unemployment rate in the next year, uh, considering not only our problems here in Peru but also the world problems, because as you say, export might not be that affected, but uh, I do see a concern because uh, I see Peruvian asparagus have increased with 50% in Denmark, where I'm originally from. And my mother talks about this every day and she kind of go like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have asparagus today. What is your picture? For my employment agriculture, between 2009 and last year was growing 9% per year. 
So salaries will have increased, yes, by demand, if that continues the process. Uh, in, at the end of 2020, we had sent them inflation a Congress afraid of popularity, and they changed the law. And they put that they have to pay 30% more, which was not so important because they were paying more than the minimum wage. Uh, but it has affected the perception in the way that a sector that was working pretty well was absorbed a lot of, of employment. It was being affected in, in, in a matter of one week, they changed all, of the, all the legal framework. Uh, I, I mean, investment continues, but at a lower pace than what have, would have been. And I mean, it continues because the profit, profit, profitability has been very strong. So it's not surprising that they continue investing, but probably at a lower pace than would have been the case otherwise. Uh, we have seen they continue growing the exports, but in volume. But in part, that is because some of the, of the crops take years to grow, avocado, for example. So they continue growing. In the case of asparagus, they have been diminishing the area. They get to asparagus because more profit will have been berries or avocados itself or other products. No? Um, no, and I, 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 am very I am optimistic that this sector is going to continue to grow, but probably at a lower pace than before. Mm. And, and, and employment, yes. Formal employment agriculture has been growing. and. In the whole economy, I put the numbers there. We have recovered a little before pandemic, not only now, 12 months ago, and the employment continues increasing, formal employment. Informal employment has also improved. The labor force participation is uh, higher than before pandemic. In part, that matter a result of inflation. More males than families have to work. The big increase in participation was the second quarter because kids started going to school in March. So it liberated a lot of people that uh, didn't have to take care of the children could go to work. No? Uh, and, and employment has been reduced. We don't have unemployment insurance. So that is very difficult to go compare Denmark to Peru and employment because they have to work if they want to survive, I put it in that way. No? Right. So, well, thank you very much. And please yep. keep up the good work. Uh, you are doing awesomely, and we are very proud to have you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have a, a, a question by Augusto Thornberry. Uh, Augusto? Yes, uh, thank you. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, yes we can. Okay, thank you. Well, some financial institutions and some economists are forecasting uh, uh, an imminent recession in some of our main trading partners and investors like the European Union or the US and a, a reduction in growth in China. How likely do you uh, think this risk is and uh, in which way would that affect our monetary policy? Um, I, I mentioned that at the start of the presentation the, uh, uh, I, I, uh, the big, big risk of recession are European Union, especially the, the driver of growth, which is Germany, there. United Kingdom probably will have stagflation. China will have a, a slowdown compared to previous periods, maybe growth higher than this year, because this year, as you know, a lot of cities have been locked completely because of the, uh, the way they are facing COVID in China. Uh, still, for example, in, many of China, in the meet, international meetings, the Chinese are still not participating physically because of the restriction they have when they return to China. So they prefer not to go out to China because they have to go into lockdown for, I don't know, now, they, it has been reduced four days in hotel and I mean, three days ago, but, but even so, is pretty inconvenient. The next is you have half of the people believing that there will be a, a soft landing or soft recession. Uh, I people saying that they will face a big recession. I'm more in the first part of, of this group. Probably you have a, or a very soft, probably a soft recession, technical recession, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.3, which is not so important. 
Blinder, uma, uma profecia, o coisa da feita da Time of Greenspan, just published a book at the start of this year. He was comparing the periods of fetitan in, in the past. And in spite of what people believe, in many cases, there has been no recession no, with this titan. Uh, but, but let us see, no, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, of course, if there is a big recession, which I don't believe will happen, it will affect monetary policy. Remember, 2008, there was a big inflation. I yeah, guess so Chile inflation reached 10% or K6.5. And the increase in price was corrected by recession after Lima. I, don't be, I, I hope that is not the case. Uh, but, but thank you for the question. Thank you. Mr. Velarde, uh, uh, I know that you have to run to a board meeting. So yeah. I'm going to close the, the, the questions with this uh, last question. Uh, sustainable investment. Uh, and it's something that uh, the Peruvian Business Council is getting into. Uh, we are committed to, to, to work uh, in promoting, uh, uh, in specializing our work in promoting sustainable investment, both impact investment and ESG. And uh, what is your vision about uh, impact investment and ESG in, the, in Peru, you know, in, in, uh, especially ESG in the United States today is becoming highly um, controversial. Uh, I believe that ESG will continue flowing from Europe. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's all uh, built up in such a way that it works more with Canada and, uh, and uh, the United States is gonna have their, let's say their Bloomberg ESG, uh, an American way of ESG. But how you see ESG and impact investment in and uh, uh, today we are uh, uh, still during uh, climate uh, week uh, here in New York. Uh, how you see the environment uh, and uh, uh, impacting the economy and 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 and, the, and what we do? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very long question. Mark Carney, the former governor of Canada, the Bank of England, has been has just published a book about that. If you want to uh, to look. Uh, we are part of, of a book that uh, of a group that is led by the Bank of France uh, about ESG and investment, worried about the changing in climate. But uh, we don't invest in corporates. So in our case, we invest some paper of multilateral in, in ESG, but uh, that, and we don't have banking supervision. Most of the central banks that have been more involved in this team they have banking supervision, so they are trying to put forward some criteria, or they are investing in corporates, where it can be more important, this aspect of investment. No? I cannot answer your whole question because it will take a, a long time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bernardo, thank you so much uh, uh, for everybody. Um, thank you for uh, participating, uh, participating in this event today. Uh, and uh, we have agreed with, the, with Mr. Velarde that we are going to have an event in July next year in the middle of the heat in New York City uh, to present the, 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 annual, um, the annual report of the Central Bank of Peru. I hope that we can have him before again in a, in a format like this uh, to, to know more about the Peruvian economy and how things are progressing. And uh, thank you, Mr. Velarde. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Gracias. Gracias por su participación. Bueno, vamos a hacer, uh, we are going to close now. Uh, thank you very, very much for everybody for participating in the event. Uh, we're going to have the presentation for distribution uh, tomorrow. And we have also the streaming via YouTube that we are going to make available through YouTube, uh, through LinkedIn. Uh, I want to th thank um, uh, Carolina Vaquero from LinkedIn. And, uh, uh, and I want to thank also Jorge Loyola. Jorge, thank you so much. Let's keep working uh, in, in the initiatives we have. We have also agreed with Mr. Velarde that we are going to cooperate in, on uh, research uh, on, uh, 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 on impact investment and ESG, sustainable investments. Uh, so we have to coordinate that and make sure that we can have 
a, a, a product at the level that we, we, we expect and the investors expect to have about these topics in Peru. Uh, thank you again, and uh, until the next uh, occasion. Bye.